your presented statement, sir. You say you support confiscating guns from individuals determined to be a threat to themselves or others. Determined to be. So by this legislation my colleagues are putting forth, my understanding of the, of the letter of that law, which I 1,000 percent oppose, as would our founding fathers, the letter of that law is an anonymous tip from a citizen. So if this was law, Commissioner, would you confiscate, would you go to your neighbor's home and confiscate his legally owned weapons, a man that was not under criminal investigation nor under arrest? Would you do it? The red flag laws would. That's a yes or no, brother. I got five minutes to make an hour and a half statement here. It's more than a yes or no answer. It we'll move on then. A, it would if, you can't, if you cannot say yes, you would confiscate weapons from an American citizen that was subject to this law that my colleagues intend to push through this Congress, then you, and you said in your statement that you would confiscate those weapons if an American was determined to be, your quote, a threat to themselves or others. According to that law, determined to be is defined by an anonymous tip that an American citizen is a threat to themselves or others. You're a police commissioner a thin blue line brother, sworn to uphold the Constitution, and you're saying you'd see those weapons. I see that as a problem. I'm going to bring us back in time to World War II. America's population, 140 million. 15 million American men came home from World War II with deep scars and significant skills. They bore the invisible wounds of war, and there was weapons everywhere. I want to talk about mental challenge. My father was one of those men who was a Navy pilot in World War II. He came back from the war and built his family on the seventh of his eight children. I was born in 1961. We had guns everywhere. There was virtually no regulation. Any child in the 50s could buy a weapon from any seller if daddy sent him with the money. We didn't have mass shootings. It wasn't until 1968 in America that serial numbers were even required on weapons sold in this country. You order weapons through the Sears catalog by the mail. 19, in the 70s, I attended a high school, large rural school, virtually Every vehicle in the parking lot was a pickup truck, and almost every one had a rifle or a shotgun on the back glass and a pistol in under the seat. And we didn't have school shootings. 1979, I began college. One of the jobs I had to work my way through college was as a carpenter. We restored historical buildings. We had to determine in the process of that work what was the original cuts of these, these homes, residential homes, built 75, 85, 100 years ago. You could tell by the saw cut if it was a mechanical cut, an electric cut, or a hand cut. By such observations, we knew exactly how that house was originally built. And to my amazement as a young man, beginning college in Louisiana, working. To my amazement, you know what I discovered, Madam Chair? You know what these houses did not have that were built 100 years ago in cities in America? You know what they did not have, Commissioner? Locks. Locks. Now I ask you all, what happened to that country, man? A country where homes were built in cities with no locks a country where guns were everywhere and virtually not regulated at all, where millions of Americans, 14 million Americans came back. It's 11% of the population at the time after World War II with incredible skills of war and weapons of war, as you called them, everywhere. But we didn't have mass shootings. And here we sit today where an entire once proud Democratic Party is pre presenting unbelievably unconstitutional laws to press upon our nation, and we have a police commissioner 
that says he would go home to home and confiscate legally owned weapons if he got a tip. Madam Chair, I yield my speech, but I will not yield my opposition to these unconstitutional laws.